Hi guys, thank you for coming uh, for this uh, empowering Wikidata editors and content with the Wikidata Quality Toolkit. Uh, I'm a developer of uh, a tool of Wikidata Quality Toolkit. Uh, this is about machine learning and AI based uh, some supportive tools for Wikidata editor. We are using various types of uh, machine learning model, in particular some some of the NLP model like some but or M5 like that. And we are using large language model. It's, it's kind of generative AI model to support entity schema issue. So before explaining the detail of tools, um, I will give recorded video made by made by our team leader. My name is Albert Meroño. I am an associate professor at King's College London and, um, and a volunteer uh, Wikidata developer. And it is my greatest pleasure um, to be introducing this session today about empowering editors, hopefully all of you in the room and online. Uh, empowering you to produce better quality content for Wikidata. And as you will see, the way we approach this is by producing two different tools uh, that are intended to um, help in the keeping of, in the upkeeping of the quality of Wikidata references and in producing high quality entity schemas. Um, it was my plan from the beginning to be there and do this in person. Uh, unfortunately, becoming a parent is full of uh, events that we don't really have full control of. Uh, so I'm really sorry that I cannot be there, but I hope that we can meet uh, sometime in the in the future. All right. So this will, um, as I said, this session will be just a brief introduction to two very specific tools. It will be very practical. Uh, but before we jump into that, I just wanted to introduce you to the team that's behind the production of these tools. Um, this team is made of uh, Elena Odinaldo, yours truly um, at King's College, Miriam, who works at, uh, at with the Wikimedia Foundation and has been for a while with us at, uh, at King's, helping us learn and understand um, how the community works and, and, and what's worth pursuing in terms of uh, open knowledge and knowledge equity. And then Jongmo, who hopefully is sitting right there in the room with all of you, uh, he'll be leading one of the uh, demos later on on reference checking. Uh, Bo Hui, who should be online, and he'll be leading the tutorial on schema generation. And also Kulud and Yi Wen, who've been helping a great deal in the in the production in the production of these and other tools related to Wikidata Quality Toolkit. Uh, you can see that there is a great deal of. Um, university people and academics in, in the team, you might be asking yourselves why. That's because we're really interested in, in, in the transition of tools for open knowledge and knowledge equity from the lab to the real world. And to us, the real world means you, right? So it means the editors. It means uh, people who use their you know spare time and their knowledge to improve sources like Wikipedia and Wikidata and making them better. And we in the lab sometimes produce algorithms and tools and lots of things that many, many times we, we can't be sure uh, about how useful they are and how much they're actually helping uh, real people and, and the real world. And this is very much the focus of not just this session, but but all the efforts that we've been pursuing, um, I would say not only this year, but also in the previous years, in first producing research that helps in these two cases I mentioned before, reference checking and, uh, and schema generation, uh, but also in many others. And um, proving, actually proving that we can make a difference, that these tools can make a difference, that um, research can make a difference in, in the real world is really, really important to us. So that's why uh, that's why the academic uh, team. Besides that, we're really, you know, just 
people who enjoy open knowledge and 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 um, free access to knowledge for everyone, which I think it must be a shared sentiment across the room and also the the uh, the conference. So uh, as I said before, this is intended to be a highly per participative session, right? Very interactive. Uh, the way we thought we could manage this is through a free for all, free to edit uh, Google Doc. It's open to all of you. If you just scan that QR code, I'm just gonna keep talking for the next 10, 15 seconds so that you have time to, you know, to pick up your phone or just type the URL or just take a picture or whatever you want to do. Uh, so that you can access that uh, that Google Doc. You'll see the Google Doc is a little structured, this is just because of what I said that okay, we are academic people and we have we need some sense of uh, you know of of structure in our lives. Um, but it's really up to you to use that doc in in any way you want, right? We I think we've divided it into introduction and then proof, which is reference checking, and then ESGen, which is entity schema generation. And there are some pre-filled questions in there. Um, that by the end of the session, we think you should be able to answer. Um, if you'd like to answer them, that would be incredibly, incredibly valuable to us. And, you know, in the midterm also to you, because that will make sure that what we're doing is, uh, useful to you. Um, but otherwise please feel free to, you know, to keep as many notes or thoughts or just dump uh your your thinking in that doc please and also if you are keen on it also completely optional if you want to add at the top uh, i think you'll see already a, a few examples if you want to add your user your wikidata user id and a link to your um to your user page that would be much appreciated because then you know we can we can keep a certain engagement and we can come back and ask you questions and uh and hopefully hopefully make you uh, users of uh, of these tools if they are beneficial um, to you. Okay, so that's the QR code. I'm going to come back to it in a second because this is the first interactive uh, part of the of the tutorial. So this is a question for the entire room. What is Wikidata quality to you? What does Wikidata quality mean uh, to you? And how do you deal with your with Wikidata quality in your workflows as an editor? So in your daily activities of editing, how does Wikidata quality play a role? How do you ensure it? How do you guarantee it? How do you care for it, etc.? Right. So what is Wikidata quality? How do you deal with it in your uh, in your everyday uh, editing tasks? Um, I'm gonna leave you know, 30 seconds, one minute to complete this task. Uh, John, well, feel free to, you know, to press the pause button um, uh, because I'll, I'll just I'll just keep speaking and assume that uh, that you've all filled that. Feel free to answer the question in the shared Google Doc I just mentioned, right? So here it is again, in case you want to scan it. Um, and otherwise you can also type in the chat. I think somebody's supervising the chat uh, or just raise your hand and and, and say, you know, whatever uh, comes through your mind. Okay, I'm going to resume. Um, I'm sure you've written. So please give any um, your idea or comments on that um, Google Doc and I will give QR code before giving hands-on activity every time. So give any your idea because we are really keen to hear your voice. We are quite academic team, so we don't know how Wikidata editor works. So we need more some voice from you. Yes. Lots of really interesting things. I wish I could, you know, peek into them, you know, just look into the future. Um, but hopefully you've mentioned things that possibly revolve around knowledge integrity, right? The fact that when we're editing Wikidata items, we have all these things, right? So we have labels and we have item identifiers, we have descriptions and properties and, and, and values for those properties and qualifiers, and we have uh, references, groups of statements and so on. And hopefully you've mentioned words and, and uh, you know, sentences or, or thoughts 
that relate to data quality, really, right? So in the first place, as in, okay, so how do we know the veracity of the statements in this uh, Q42, in this Douglas Adams uh, item page? And how do we know that, uh, you know, that the references that are supporting these claims uh, come from reliable sources, right? So quality of references. Or, uh, well, why is educated ad a relevant property for Douglas Adams? Um, and why not another set of properties, uh, right? So hopefully you've mentioned words around these issues, right? Words like ontology, which I know is very popular, uh, words around uh, trust, um, credibility, authority, uh, relevance, accuracy, um, fact-checking maybe, um, right? But all these things around uh, the shared topic of knowledge integrity. Um, um, whatever you said, again, if, if you put it in the document and I haven't covered it with this, uh, we'll, re we'll be really interested in your notions of around uh, data quality. So we'll definitely come back to you. Um, one way we're doing this also, this is the work of uh, Elizabeth Kutsiana, another uh, PhD student at, at King's, is we're interested in how these issues arise from volunteer conversations, right? So everybody knows uh, Wikipedia talk pages, less people know, and I'm sure this audience will know better, uh, Wikidata item uh, discuss discussion pages. Um, these, disc these discussions are fascinating, right? From the point of view of ensuring this quality, how can we make the quality of Wikidata items um, uh, a, a, as good as possible or how can we make it better? And how does that relate to issues around data quality and trust and how does it relate to ontology and schemas? Uh, which I think you can already see that are going to be the big topics of this, uh, of this tutorial. So, uh, that is really, and, and it's not just because we made an interesting observation, right? I think many people within the community and within uh, Wikimedia know about this, right? So Wikidata quality issues is something documented in lots of corners, but uh, there is a page in, there's a wiki project on data quality, right? Uh, and there it says, ensuring data quality is of utmost importance as the goal of Wikidata is to give more people more access to knowledge. And therefore, the data needs to fit the, the needs of the data consumers, right? So very clear, right? High data quality. That's what it means uh, to ensure weak data quality. On the other hand, uh, there is this other page about ontology issues prioritization in, in Wikidata, uh, talking about ontology issues, right? So looking at Wikidata quality from another perspective, namely, Ontology issues have been identified as a major issue reusers are facing when trying to build applications, services, etc., with Wikidata's data. Right. So the fact that Wikidata does not have an inner end and an explicitly defined ontology uh, can cause problems to the to people that are trying to uh, reuse Wikidata uh, to build these applications and services. Right. So. Um, very important issues recognized by, you know, within the foundation, among you, uh, uh, yourselves. Um, and also, we are also not the first to think, well, it would be cool to have tools to, to help improve these issues, right? So there is this fantastic tool called Mix and Match uh, for link validation and correction uh, that we've been really looking at uh, for the last year. And we're very well aware that improving entity schemas, it, which is our approach to uh, solving Wikidata ontology issues, is not by far uh, the, the most important uh, or the only, for that matter, uh, relevant uh, ontology issue in Wikidata. There are many, uh, but improving entity schemas and giving support to the validation and the generation of these entity schemas is definitely one of them. All right, so more specifically, and you can already see these two boxes, so that's that's going to be like the two, this is going to be like a very binary uh, tutorial, right? We have uh, we have been looking, the team has been looking at these two different issues, right? But quality of references 
and inconsistent modeling of entity schemas. Let's look at references first. So here you can see a very classic example of uh, what can go wrong with references in Wikidata, supporting Wikidata statements and, and claims, right? So we have here something extracted, I believe from Q44. Uh, uh, that's the Q item for beer. I'm sure all of, or most of you know it. Um, and here we have a reference. So, so here we have a claim, beer, this joint union of a couple of things. And then there's one reference URL supporting uh, the statement. Um, but unfortunately, that doesn't resolve everywhere, anywhere, right? So that gives back a 404 not found uh, in French, um, right? Which is not the language that we have pre-configured in the, um, in, uh, as our user's preferred language in, uh, in Wikidata for that item. So that means, well, that reference cannot really support that statement anymore, right? Something wrong. Uh, there's something wrong with that and somebody should do something about it. Um, right, so quality of references, first issue. Second issue, um, here you've got two examples of properties used to model two airports, right? So one of them is Heathrow Airport here in London, and the other one is uh, Katowice uh, International Airport that a few of you must have used to, uh, um, uh, to reach Wikimania. Um, and then one would expect that airports such a, you know, uh, abstract entity share properties. Uh, but in practice, this is really just up to the editors, right? Some properties might be shared, some other properties might not be shared. In this case, Heathrow has 72 properties, Katowice has 28, you can already see there's not going to be a full match, uh, but 24 of them are reused among, right? So, you know, entity schemas are there, uh, are there and they're supposed to address this problem, right? So they can give this sort of template of properties that an item must uh, must have. But what support is there really uh, to uh, to produce these entity schemas automatically? And this is exactly what Buhu is going to address with uh, the presentation of his tool. So these are the two problems that we're dealing with. I'm sure they sound uh, very familiar to you. What we've produced is two AI-based assistive tools for helping Wikidata editors with uh, managing references or improving the quality of references and automatically generating entity schemas. Uh, the first one is Proof. Uh, Proof uses uh, lang large language models for reference quality verification. Uh, Jongmo is going to tell you everything about it. You can already see a little bit of the interface that gets activated whenever you activate the, the widget in your user. You can see a reference score up here in the top right corner of the screen that gives you an intuition of how good are the references of this item, uh, Q44 in general, uh, and gives a call for, uh, in the first place, for adding more references. We know that the first problem with references is that we don't have enough. Um, so gives uh, an account of how many are missing for this particular item, but then uses large language models to give an assessment of the quality of this uh, of the references that do appear in the in the item, and and things that can be done about them uh, or the ones that need more attention. So Jomo is going to tell you everything about how to install and use uh, proof, and we we would be really 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 keen in. Uh, knowing uh, your feedback, right? Your perspective, how well it can potentially or is uh, helping you to solve uh, reference uh, reference checking issues and reference quality verification, in particular with the hands-on that a little hands-on that we have prepared. And then ESGen is going to be led by Bohui online, and he's going to tell you how to use E. S Gen for automated entity schema generation, right? So again, we use uh, generative AI and large language models to help produce these uh, entity schemas that are sometimes technically hard to uh, to write. Uh, and Bohu is going to tell you how we propose these entity schemas based on a on a particular class um, that uh, that's provided by the user. And, and how can that entity schema be refined and, and, and checked. All right, that's the overall structure of the, of the session today. Um, I've 
just done the first part, which is, you know, just humbly completely useless because I haven't taught you to use any of these things, but hopefully I've given you enough as to, you know, to grasp your interest uh, uh, towards the end of the session. For the next approximately half an hour, uh, Jogmo is going to uh, uh, tell you how to use proof and uh, guide you on a hands-on activity. And then Bohui will do the same with uh, with ESGen. Uh, again, remember you have the doc to write down your notes and your user IDs. It was a pleasure to meet you and I hope to meet all of you very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and um, yes, our present for Provi. This is a kind of reference checking tool. And then I'm the developer of the, this tool, but this tool is still under development. So it has a lot of problem, but still we can test it at least. <laughs> Okay, for a bit. Yes. Uh, this tool based on the paper of pipeline for automated provenance verification of knowledge graphs against textual sources. It's a complicated title, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then I made this pipeline, but it's still very difficult to understand, right? This is very technical paper. So I, I made very simple and nice uh, data flow uh, to better understanding. So first of all, this tool would you uh, process for each tripper, for example, that uh, beer has characteristics, bitterness. So this tripper would you have this URL, the uh, external URL is not um, connected to Wikipedia page. So web scraper in the back end, this scraper would you collect HTML document via this URL or by accessing this URL. And then we can have this HTML document and AI model uh, should select top relevant sentences because there are so many sentences to be uh, compared uh, to this tripper. So we need to select most, most relevant sentences to avoid exhausting processing time. So this model would have three or five relevant sentences in the back end. And then lastly, the AI model would you check uh, this sentence, uh, if this sentence is supportive or not supportive uh, for this tripper. So we can have uh, this leisure, like some beer has characteristics, bitterness, and then we can see the most relevant and supportive sentences uh, from this link. So this is very simple work, how Provi works. And then we have some another related tools for this, uh, this Provi tool. So we are planning to publish Wikidata gadget to, to enhance Wikidata editing some behavior. So I will show you how to use this Provi gadget. And we have very simple web page for representing some bad items to be addressed in terms of references. So we called it a Provi worklist. And this is the very uh, pilot tool to show Provi stats. So maybe user can check uh, the quality of references over the wiki data. So we are developing for these three tools. And then Provi Gadget, uh, I will show how to implement this Provi Gadget tool. Uh, okay, uh, before, before explaining how to implement, I will explain the UI. So this is the beer, and this is the reference score. Reference score means that this is comprehensive score to indicate the quality of references uh, according to the item for this one, beer. So beer item would have uh, 0 0.67 reference score. So you can see this score to check this item is good or not. And then this is just a uh, very simple box to, uh, to recommend uh, added some items having no references. 
And this is the result table. A red box uh, will represent very bad uh, references. And yellow box uh, will represent uh, some kind of controversial item uh, to be fixed for the editors. And this green box will represent very nice URLs. And then there are some selective, selected sentences and triple. And proving God's implementation, uh, we are still under development of this profit tool. So log in your Wikidata account, and then you can go to this um, your this URL to activate your common JS file and import this script. Yes, we are planning to publish this uh, profit gadget uh, in a Wikidata gadget, but we are still under development. So you can try this to test uh, this tool, and then. <coughs> And I will show you how to implement this tool uh, by my computer in hands-on session. And uh, refreshing the wiki data page you are viewing and you will be able to see private components. So yeah, this is the uh, common JS page, but don't worry, I will show how to implement uh, step by step. Uh, and then if you wanted to change it the UI, or if you wanted to customize the result uh, where you are interested, so you can uh, access this GitHub repository to modify JS file. So this is very simple repository, uh, including a JavaScript file. And this is the probably worklist, so you can access this URL to see uh, what is the bad items uh, with bad references, you can see that. And uh, this column and connected site means that a number of connection to Wikimedia pages using the query because uh, we are struggling to find uh, the most usable items to be calculated uh, by Provi. So we are finding a way we, we can prioritize these items uh, in the top list to be calculated. And then this is the previous step, and you can see a very simple, very, very simple graphs uh, we are still developing for this uh, previous step. Okay, this is a hands-on activity. So I think uh, this room is not a great place to do something, so I will show you some examples. So you can follow my activity and then uh, give some comments or questions. Uh, can you share? Okay. Okay, first of all, how to implement Proby Gadget. Uh, first of all, log in the page. And then, yes, you can go to user and your username, user colon and your username, and slash and common dot js. Again, uh, user colon your username and slash and common dot js. And you can open here. Maybe if you are uh, first user to use this functionality, uh, this button gonna be just a create button. So you can click the create button but I'm not first user, so I can click this edit button. And then you can copy and paste this uh, simple JavaScript import code, like some import script and user event scene and slash pref hyphen and test JS. Uh, sorry? I can hear your voice. Uh, how where where I can pass this? Sorry. Okay, so maybe I I will I will contact her later, and you can copy. 
Yeah, we can copy and paste this uh, script. Uh, sorry for inconvenience, but yeah, we, we, we will publish this tool in Wikidata gadget list. So maybe in that time, you can just check the, the checkbox to activate this tool and publish this change. And then, yeah, you can see this script. And this means that uh, this tool would be activated and go to this page and link fresh. And you can see some this reference score and drop down button uh, of the probably item. You can click this one. Yes, you can see the lizard like this one for a beer. And then uh, maybe some item, uh, wiki data, maybe Q14, Austria. Yeah, this size 10 is uh, is not calculated at. So if you wanted to calculate this item, just by click this button. But um, during this session, um, I just uh, restricted it to calculate another item during the session. But after the session, you can try to click this button to see the probable result for the entire Wikidata item. OK, so this is PR2, so you can see some um, some controversial items or good items, right? So, okay. So this is the how to implement Provi. Uh, this one. And then, and then you can give any feedback for it. And then this is the uh, hands-on activity. Hands-on activity is that um, you can update uh, URLs for the existing trippers, and then you can see the difference after adding references, uh, and and you can see the result calculated by Provi. So I can do that. So for beer, uh, it's going to maybe very common things or oh, maybe hops okay so we are made from materials hops uh, we already know this is very true this is very common knowledge but we can add uh, external URL for it for example uh, this page uh, would you have uh, enough information for this tripper so copy this URL and goes to this statement and then add references. Okay. Oh, I can add it because <laughs> decided just to create it ID. I will. Okay, I can add it now. This item hopes references and add references. And okay, no. Properties reference URL and give this URL and publishing. Okay, and then we can have um, reference URL for this hopes part. And then it goes up. Uh, we'll go to this top page and we can click this uh, the compute button and uh, this message pops out and then we can wait for maybe uh, 10 seconds or 20 seconds uh, for probably processing maybe so uh, yeah this logo means that uh, probably is working for this item Maybe it's like some time. Hmm. Okay, it takes some time. So because it has the problem to collect HTML document some time because the um, um, server would reject to collect HTML document. So for that, 
uh, cases, it requires more time. Uh, okay, okay, it's done. So you can see the lizard, right? So beer has part hoofs. Uh, it has uh, these sentences from this link. So Prevy can give your very huge per or some most relevant sentences from um, the added uh, references. So yeah, this is the hands-on activity. And then uh, I will explain more things. So because we have a lot of problem for this because uh, for this tripper, beer has characteristics bitterness. This may take a few seconds, but we can access this link, right? But I mean, this is kind of some web scrapey problem. Some, some, some web server would you reject to collect their own HTML document by anonymous server. So we are trying to figure out how to uh, improve this problem. And then this is the another problem because this is very um, irregular triple, triple. I mean, it's kind of some special triple, like the this triple beer disjoint union of list of various qualifiers, and probably would you, would you consider more item like the spontaneously fermented beer or mixed permitted beer, but the current code, uh, it only can consider a very simple tripper. So for this case, probably cannot understand uh, what's the meaning of this triple. So yeah, is there another problem? So go back to this hands-on activity. So for this session, uh, in order to avoid exhausting user requesting, uh, I'll give some um, Google spreadsheet for example items uh, to be uh, to be processed during this work session. So you can try to add references, or you, are, you, are, you can try to modify or correct the your references to see the leisure table provi, and then you can follow up this activity. And then, yes. And then I I will show you another activity is for Nikijo Vic Vic. <laughs> I can <laughs> I can pronounce. This is a kind of the um, historical monument of Poland. But the problem is that uh, our AI model was trained with uh, English based some training data, but sometimes so, so this model cannot understand some Polish like that. So we can add more some references for that. And, th uh, and then another problem is that uh, many tripper uh, would be written in English, but the references URL would have different language to support English tripper. So we have some problem for it. So to, to improve this reference, I can add uh, English URL like this. So this this item I can add more supportive URL like this. Okay, so this tripper now can have two references and then recompute again. And yes, yeah, so we're wait us then twenty seconds or thirty seconds to see the lizard. This is the very um, simple Provi activity. You can see the uh, reference checking lizard uh, by AI model. Hmm. Okay, it's done. Yeah, but this page wouldn't have. I mean, this is very. Um, Oh, this is very weird because uh, when I tested for this, uh, the model can understand. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, this no label issue. Okay, so uh, the backend, um, this probing model um, tried to get 
label and description information for each Wikidata tripper, but sometimes Wikidata server uh, rejected to return uh, labels and description information for Wikidata trippers. So we are trying to solve this problem. So this problem is derived from uh, this tool cannot access uh, this uh, component, so it can return just no labor. So we are fixing this problem. OK, so that's the hands-on event. So you can see the very simple um, process to follow. Yes, this is uh, probably some hands-on activity. So do you have any some question for it? OK. Sorry, I, I don't have a laptop here. I'm um, currently okay. not trying to follow. And perhaps I'm reading the room wrong. But I think um, it's currently close to impossible for people to participate because um, the way to get there involves opening links that are displayed for a second on the screen um, <laughs> and whatever. Um, perhaps people need more time. OK. OK, maybe, yes, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm waiting for your some understanding. Or you can do something. Or maybe another or want to ask something. Uh, um, I try to import the link you told us to use, and this is what I'm getting. This import script. You mean? Um, I use um user user my username then common .js. Uh -huh. Then this is the I imported the JavaScript. This is what I'm getting. It's not showing oh. the proof tool for me. So you cannot access this page, right? Yeah, something like that. Oh. Okay. Okay. It's I, not I activated. Just know. Have like okay. <laughs> I didn't. Know. Okay. Sorry. I, I'll fix later. So okay. Ah, uh, sorry. So you cannot access this common JS page and then you cannot import JavaScript, right? I, if, as for me, I can't, I have the page, but the Provi is not activated. I don't know what, oh. I refresh, I like the, ca the cache. Uh, it's not working in French? No. I should change my language to English, if possible? Oh. It's, it's only for English Wikidata. Uh. So if I change my language to English, I should be able to see the, the gadget. Yes, yeah, it's like some technical issue. Oh, OK. OK. <laughs> OK, I'll, I'll fix the technical issue. OK. No, or no? not, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll check it later. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's about the JavaScript problem. Okay, maybe um, I'll give some time and then. Uh, I'm not sure what's problem on JavaScript.
Okay, so if, if you have uh, some technical issue, so let me know. And then I think we are going to next uh, um, part. It's about uh, entity schema generator. Uh, it's built on, uh, I mean, it's based on large language model. It's like some generative AI model to generate entity schema. So because uh, we are, we are wanted to, uh, we just wanted to make more interactive AI tool to generate entity schema uh, instead of using very rule based entity schema some validator like Sharks or Shaker. So you can give any requirement via chat interface, like some maybe you can ask, uh, you can make some any um, um, base entity schema related to airport or whatever. So Buhui will uh, present uh, this part and will show some demo. Uh, thank you, thank you, Jomo. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, great, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Great, thank you. Uh, so, um, uh, thanks everyone um, for joining our session. Uh, so I'm going to introduce the uh, second tool that we developed in the WQT project, which is ESGen Entity Schema Generator. Uh, so, for uh, to give a general background introduction for who are not familiar with Entity Schema and also uh, Schema Generation, uh, what is a schema? A schema defines the structure of data stored in the in the database. They are extensively used across the web and they cover thousands of uh, types of data. And Wikidata schemas over a standardized framework for data in a particular subject area, uh, enabling the creation of models for any type or collection of items. Uh, and why is schema important for Wikidata? As mentioned by, uh, by Albert uh, by Albert, uh, Wikidata schemas offer a method to verify the proper structure of data for a specific type of item. And also, it is important to enhance um, data quality and usability. Also, fosters community communication, growth, uh, minimizes the conflicts, and also uh, help the data sharing and reuse for Wikidata uh, data reusers. And also using schemas helps reduce Wikidata ontology issues mentioned before, such as inconsistent modeling and conceptual ambiguity. Um, to give a, a bit more uh, introduction to the Wikidata ontology issues that we are interested in and also in the schema we're gonna solve, uh, inconsistent modeling occurs when similar kinds of data are modeled in different ways. It happens both across different domains, also within a single domain. Uh, for example, uh, the figure on the right is the um, property counts for items in the class airport. Uh, we can clearly see that there's like a really long list of properties that has been used uh, in the, within this class. And also it is like, most of them are like only used for a, just a very few con, uh, cases of the item airport, which shows that actually the airport items in Wikidata are 
modeled in really different ways. Um, and also, what is conceptual ambiguity? Conceptual ambiguity happens when it, when it is not clearly uh, defined what the item refers to. It may uh, caused by uh, conceptual overloading of entities. For example, a item occurs uh, like covers uh, an embassy, both as a location or diplomatic mission. So like another uh, case we showed below is the uh, items representing both the application and also the company that developed it. Uh, for example, uh, like a social network surface, Weibo in in China, this item is uh, ambiguously uh, modeled uh, since the application itself and also the company itself is modeled within the same item. And good examples of clear distinctions are, for example, Dropbox. They have separate items for the company, the service, and also the Android application. And also Twitter or X, they have uh, uh, distinct items for the company, service, and also the application. Um, and here we show uh, two examples of anti schema. So this is a uh, shape based uh, language of of uh, data modeling. The first example is about algorithm. We can see that they contain a, a list of properties that are required by uh, by this uh, set of items or optionally being used. For example, um, those time complexity and also space complexity are required for uh, modeling algorithm, but named after or discover or in or inventor are considered as optional um, properties that they may be used just in a portion of of the items in this class. Uh, the second example is patent. We can see also a list of properties uh, with um, also with some IDs. They can have constraints on the values, which can be date, time, uh, string, and numbers. And uh, we developed anti schema generator, and it is a human the loop tool for anti schema and knowledge graph uh, validation report generation. And it offers a list of basic functionalities. Uh, it generates anti schema based on analysis of Wikidata items. It enables editing and refinement of uh, anti schemas. It integrates Shax based knowledge validation, and also it generates uh, reports of the validation results. And we have already done the first two functionalities. Uh, and that's the long-term uh, goal of this uh, project is that we're going to integrate language models. And we are integrating language models in this uh, workflow so that we're not require like human decisions for every uh, like tiny steps of, of decisions that are obviously correct. So the language models uh, can cover most of the things and uh, Wikidata editors or domain experts who are reusing uh, such data can have like minimum uh, effort to just curate some of the uh, uh, some of the errors or defects in, in, in anti schema. And about the hands on activity, we're going to uh, show a, a demo video.
Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, please let me know if you cannot hear the uh, the sound from from the video. Wiki workshop session. In this de uh, demo, I will be showing you one of our Wikidata quality toolkits, the Entity Schema Generator. In this video, we will demonstrate the basic functions of this toolkit by constructing two entity schemas from scratch. The tool consists of three tabs. The first is the introduction tab, where we outline functionalities of the tool and provide relevant resources. The second is the generate tab, which is used to generate an entity schema from scratch. The third is the modify tab, which can be used to add, change, or remove constraints from existing entity schema. The tool will analyze existing Wikidata items to draft a entity schema for you. Afterwards, you can refine it by answering a few questions from a chatbot. Now let's take an example of the class museum. Uh, first, we input the name of the new entity schema, in this case, museum. Then we search for the relevant Wikidata item ID for the class museum. The third input here is the cutoff, which means that we temporarily ignore all properties that are used on less than 50% of items in the class for the initial entity schema generation. For example, if the property architect has been used for more than 50% of the items in the class museum, we will include it in the first draft generated. Otherwise, it will be saved as a pending property that we will decide on in the second step. The fourth input here is the data type for Wikidata properties that we want to include. By default, it is Wikibase item. You can also select external ID if you want to include properties that belongs to external ID. After setting up these inputs, we click the Generate button and wait for a few minutes. Now we have the first draft of the Entity Schema. The chatbot has posed the first question, asking about the property heritage designation. We provided the instruction here on how to respond to the chatbot. If you think the property is required for all items in the class, click yes here, and the property will be added into the entity schema as required property. If you think the property is only used on some items in the class, click optional, the property will be added as optional property to the entity schema. If you think the property should not be used on any items in the class, click no, uh, the property will be added as the property should not be used in the schema. If you can't de cannot decide now, feel free to click skip. Um, the property will be skipped and, let and left undecided. As you response to the respond to the chatbot, you will notice that the list of constraints in the entity schema grows longer. For example, if we click optional here, we can see the property heritage designation has been added as an optional property. After addressing uh, all the pending properties, the chatbot will display a hint message. Uh, now let's go ahead and answer a few questions to enrich the entity schema. We said owned by is optional. We can select architect as optional as well. And we can set member of as optional. Now we have a bit longer um, entity schema. Let's assume it is finished. We, then we can use it to perform some basic validation. We will use the validator on Wikidata. Here we provide a link to it. Um, the validation process is straightforward. Users simply copy and paste the generate entity schema and write a Sparkle query to collect the entities. Now let's copy the entity schema and we paste it to the validator. 
and we write a query uh, to select some entities in the class of museum. We run query to fetch entities. Then we do the validation. We can see a list of um, items here um, past the validation, while some of them are not. Now let's try another example algorithm. Again, we input the name of the entity schema. And we search the item ID for the class algorithm. We still use the same cutoff and we use the default property type. Then we click generate. After a few minutes, you can get the generated in this schema. Again, we um, refine the generated entity schema by answering some questions from the chatbot. We think the property different from can be optional. So class of can be optional as well, named after optional. Discoverer or inventor, they're important, but still optional. Um, maintained by wiki project, optional. Now we have um, a bit longer list of constraints. Let's assume this entity schema is satisfied and ready to use. Also, we copy this entity schema. We paste it on the validator. And and we change the um, class ID that we want to select. We run query to fetch the items. And then we do the validation. Again, we can see uh, there are some items that passed uh, the validation, where others are not. So that's the, um, the overall function of um, the generate tab. For the modify tab, you can modify an existing entity schema. You can load the example or paste your own entity schema into the entity schema um, box on the right. Afterwards, you can specify the change you would like to make to your entity schema here. Um, but in this tutorial, we're going to focus on the generate tab to have, your, uh, to have a better experience on using this tool within the time we have. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, yeah, so that's the, um, that's the demo video and I hope you enjoy um, that, uh, so since um, you've mentioned, uh, Jomo and Albert mentioned that maybe uh, some of you don't have a uh, laptop print uh, with you and I've just tested that you, uh, this entity schema generator, you can use that uh, conveniently use uh, using your uh, form. So I'm gonna give the link here so if you go to this link you can uh, simply try our tool uh, from your browser and we can uh, skip for the validation step for today but we uh, and we just focus on the generation and refinement so uh, we have two hands-on activities if you are interested in uh, trying this tool first is to use the empty schema uh, generator to generate the schema for the class uh, language. 
and also data set. Um, so the steps is uh, straightforward as we showed in the demo video that you include the name of the schema, uh, the item ID for the class. You can just type the, type the name of uh, name of the class and you can search for uh, the item ID and also choose a cutoff threshold. Uh, usually we use 50% and then press the generate button. Uh, and then you can refine the generated entity schema by interacting with the with the chat board. And we have four options. Uh, so if you can see my screen, I'm gonna make this larger so that everyone can see it. Um, so in this in this generate tab, we have um, we have first uh, the, the basic generation with uh, all of the input, and then we have this refinement step where we uh, provided four options uh, to accept the proposed property and make it optional one, and also reject that property. And if you have no idea about that uh, proposed problem, you can uh, skip that. Um, so let's try with, with language. We click generate. And based on the um, like the um, complexity of, of uh, or like the information contained in uh, the items that we collected in the background, this query process may take, um, I'm not sure, like 20, um, 20 seconds to, to um, 60 or 70 seconds um, to run. And after generated the um, first draft, this refinement step will gonna be uh, faster. <clears throat> and uh, we have tested like a long list of items uh, or classes for this tool, but there may also have like some of the uh, items or classes that may uh, have errors when you're running or trying with our tool. That may be because they have like um, very uh, contact cases. If you find any issues or bugs, feel free to um, to raise the, uh, they have the community um, tab, feel free to raise that or um, you can just uh, contact us through email and we're happy to help you to uh, see what the issues. Thank you. Some have a question. How long should this take? This schema generation again? Because I'm um, now up to 85 seconds. Yeah, so now it works. Yeah, so um, so it's actually um, because first, um, the space is hosted on like free server of Hugging Face. So it has like, uh, um, like uh, running memory, um, limits and also it based on the query speed of of the items so actually from the back end we query 200 items for the for the classes and then we filter all those um properties with um uh using those cutoff and then from the back end we can see that we collected uh nine properties to the uh, for the initial schema, 
and we also have like 51 properties added to the pending list. So, which means that in the second step here, you're gonna uh, deal with uh, 51 uh, properties to have a uh, complete list of, of anti-schema. Uh, but if you think that, okay, this one's like already quite enough to, to, to use, then we can just uh, stop responding to, to, uh, to the chatbot. Because uh, Shex is based on uh, like closed word assumption, it's so it's a bit different with uh, like RDF or like OWL. Uh, but if you um, think that the um, like the um, like the proper list is actually uh, quite enough to use or to validate uh, um, like repeated items, I think it's quite optional for. Uh, uh, based on the input and also the uh, user requirements. I haven't even got to the chatbot stage. I'm at 210 seconds on my query. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe there are like people uh, working on this this tool and may have like a um, queue or something like that. And we will migrate on uh, this tool uh, to the uh, Toolforge uh, shortly. And uh, you can have like a better uh, like, like experience using, uh, using this tool. Uh, I have a question. Uh, this is a super basic question and I just wanna make sure that I understand properly what an entity schema is. It's like a mm -hmm. set of properties that I expect for a particular entity is that correct uh, and is there i was just reading through the fabricator tickets is is this enforced on wikidata like if i if airport is a particular has a schema and i say this is an instance of airport does wikidata validate that i add all those entities or do i have to do it via other tools yeah so thank you thank you for questions these are two really good ones so first question uh yeah, so entity schema, uh, you're partially uh, correct. So entity schema is consists of a list of uh, triple constraints. It's not necessarily, um, or it's like not exactly property, but property with the with the range or the data type or the value set of of the object. So it's a uh, so each line or each component here is actually a triple constraint. And for the second question, uh, so entity schema is something that uh, commonly accepted by the community uh, who are working on uh, Wikidata, and uh, uh, you can find a direct uh, directory containing all this um, Like a long list of uh, anti schemas that has been contributed from from uh, uh, from editors uh, and who are interested in this topic, and I think the meaning of like why we use this is to check in. So first, do the validation, checking the items whether they uh, conform to this um, check schema. Uh, the second thing I would say that. That is to solve uh, the uh, two ontology issues or more uh, that we mentioned before about inconsistent modeling and also conceptual ambiguity. So uh, yes, of course, Wikidata editors can still contribute to the way that they think uh, we like like um, better to 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 model the items, which is totally fine because the diversity is a like important issue for. Uh, for Wikidata uh, modeling, but ha like having this um, having this uh, schema is to find those entities that are uh, like uniformly modeled that can be reused in uh, like a wide range of use cases that we need such a uh, consistently model uh, model data, and uh, I think that's um, that's the usage of of uh, entity schema. Is 
Is there any question? Thank you. My question is about the proof gadget. Uh, I would like to know, uh, I mean, it's a, great, it's a very great tool. And I'm thinking about uh, maybe something using it on Wikipedia. Is it planned? And uh, why Wikidata instead of Wikipedia? Because we, uh, it could be very helpful on Wikipedia to be able to actually e evaluate the, the references on an article. So why Wikidata? And is Wikipedia coming up after that? Thank you. OK, uh, thank you for asking. This is a very great question. Uh, we have a plan to extend this probit tour for Wikimedia, but uh, at the very first beginning point to develop this tool, uh, many references belongs to Wikipedia. Uh, they are quite messy because some journal paper, we cannot access that paper due to its right. But Wikidata, we can access or we can filter some, some like some, yeah, and we can filter some URLs like some based on their some RD trippers or property. So that is our reason why we are starting from the Wikidata. We can filter on accessible URLs based on RD trippers. But yeah, we have a plan to extend this tool for Wikimedia pages and items. Thank you. Thank you for asking. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Thank you. I I noticed that most like I tested after the the first page. I tested other pages and it was like no, we haven't tested the the tool. Provis hasn't been working on this page and they are like, do you want to prioritize? How long does it take for a page? Does it depend on number of links that is on the page? Uh, what happens when we click on prioritize? How many days or how many minutes does it take for a page to be evaluated with uh, uh, with Pro? Thank you. Yes. Uh, that's a very big problem, uh, I mean, even including that ESGN tool, because many AI models nowadays, they require very massive, massive some processing time like that. And then we are still using GPU resource, like some A30. This is quite powerful GPU resource, but it takes some time to process the item. Um, the process time for Wikidata item, it would be depends on the number of URLs. But um, we are still working on um, minimizing the processing time by adapting some patch processing like that. But I think maybe for w 10 URLs, uh, it take one minute. So yeah, but this is our very so, fundamental problem for now. OK, thank you for asking. So is there any question? No more questions? So it's OK. OK, yes, thank yeah. You. Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you for coming to uh, this session. It's a very nice session. And then I'm sorry for inconvenient to do this activity, because this is my first time to attend Wikimania Hackathon. So maybe next time it will be a bit better. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for it's coming. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you, everyone.